Hi guys, it's Rose, and welcome back to A Spoonful of Geekiness. Today, because my body decided to hate me the entire week, I only had time to do a quick video and not the video I actually wanted to do. Hopefully that'll come up next week, and I will tell you all about it at the end of the video. So I'm just gonna film a quick little thing about some really cool and interesting books that I have on my shelf that I either got because they were really cool or um, are really cool because of what's inside them. So we're gonna start with the oldest books I have, move on through some of my favorites, and then eventually get to like the big, the big books. Because I like big books and I cannot lie. <laughs> Okay, first up, I have a very tiny book. This is William Shakespeare's Tragedies, and I honestly, I don't know how old this book is. I know it's old, like, if you just, yeah, kind of look at it, you can tell it's old, but it actually does not have a publication page, which is kind of weird. All it says, it is printed in Great Britain. That's... All it says before it gets straight into the, you know, title pages and then the um, table of contents. So I don't know how old it is. I think I got it at a yard sale and I just loved it because it was cute and tiny and it was William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare. You can't go wrong with William Shakespeare. And also it had this cute little ribbon in it, a little ribbon marker currently have it on Hamlet because I was helping my little sister with a school project. So yeah, I thought that was really cool. The next book is the oldest book that I own. And let me tell you, I'm impressed. So my Grammy gave me this book. It is Black Beauty by Anna Sewell. And it has this really pretty cover. It did have a dust jacket. When it came to me, the dust jacket was already dying. And when you hear how old this book is, it'll make sense. So the dust jacket was already dying. I repaired it and repaired it until it just kind of disintegrated on me. And I could not repair it anymore. Even fully laminating it would not do the trick because like half of it was gone. Half of it had fallen off. Um, even, you know, laminating it. So yeah, I was very sad. So this book, it did have a dust cover. Look at how pretty it is inside. I mean, it's beautiful. And um, this book was actually published in 1945, which for a book nerd like me, that's awesome. Like this book has survived <laughs> for, let's see, there is, 80, almost 80 years. This book has survived for almost 80 years. And in the front, which I kind of like also, um, let's see, where's that page? Nope. Here's the page. Give me a sec. There it is. Okay. Like, as soon as you open it, and I can't believe I missed it. As soon as you open it, you see that it has an inscription. And it says, um, Daryl Wayne Valentine. I'm, I'm not joking. It looks like it says Valentine instead of Valentine. July 22nd, 1965, age nine, from Grandma Valentine. So that that's kind of cool. My Grammy gave it to me, and apparently someone's grandma gave it to them in 65. So this book has been through a lot, and I think that it gives it a lot of character. Next up, we have a pair of books, actually. So these are Best in Children's Books, which are other books that Grammy gave to me. I used to have the whole series. Um, there's a whole series of them. They were published throughout the 60s and 70s. Um, I think actually into the late 50s, too. And um, I'm assuming that she got them for... My mom, who was born in 69. Um, but yeah, they're just really cool. They're very, they are very, very old. And they have 
short stories in them, um, like from traditional fairy tales. They also have like articles about interesting things like um, this pink one has America's wonderful national parks and it and let's go to five little countries. So these were a lot of my learning when I was first starting to read when I was younger. Um, so I think that that's super cool. Um, I'm so sad that I only have two of them left. I used to have, I think like 10, 15 of them and I loved them, but yeah, those are pretty cool. My next book up, I only wanted to show, um, to show you how much I love this book. Um, I mentioned in my last video that The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini is one of my favorite books of all time and that I've reread Aragon Eldest most and that my first copy of Aragon fell apart. This is my first co ever copy of Aragon, guys. It, it, it was, it used to be a hardback and now it's just a floppy thing. I mean, I kind of like how it looks, that the, how the, the hardback fell off. I don't know why, but yeah, it just kind of looks like a manuscript now. It's easier to read. <laughs> uh, this is the book that I still read from when I read Aragon. I don't use my new books that I have back here. But yeah, so this is the book I was talking about last week, that it has just fallen apart. I need, I need to rebind it, but somehow I just love that I read it so much that it fell apart. <laughs> okay, now onto the books that I definitely judge by their cover. <laughs> Not all of them, but most of them. I judged them by their cover and the quick peek I got inside, and I had to buy them. So first up is a pair of books ugh, from Books A Million. Um, they're, they're very shiny. I'm trying to get glare off of it. Um, this is Gothic Horror Supernatural Horror Stories. Um, just short stories, a compilation of a bunch of different stuff that I hadn't even heard of, and I'm a real horror fan. And so, um, this actually has a pretty good set of collections. And then the other one is the Epic Tales collection. Um, it is the Greek myths and stories, and I love Greek mythology. It's my favorite mythology. <laughs> Um, as I believe I said with the Percy Jackson series. Um, but yeah, so those books were just really cool. It's by Flame Tree, and I think that that's a publisher just for Books A Million, because I haven't seen these anywhere else. Up next is a book that I was gifted for my birthday, um, several years ago, and it's probably one of the prettiest books I have. So it has gilded edges, it has a little, you know, ribbon, a marker ribbon. It is Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales. Um, I love all of the original fairy tales so much more than um, the Disney Dawn versions. I like spinoffs that include the original kind of, you know, dark kind of menacing overtone to it. Um, very much like with my Alice in Wonderland spinoffs that I mentioned last week. I'm such a geek, guys, but, but I mean, Spoonful of Geekiness, name of my channel. Makes sense. Um, so this is just a really beautiful book, um, and it has embossed trees on the cover, and I adore it. I have read every single fairy tale in here, so to ha and to have them all just in one collection, with those beautiful, like, thin, silky pages that are so nice to touch. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, been, it's definitely one of my favorite books, definitely one of the coolest books that I have on my bookshelf. I have a pile of near tumbling books because I stacked the, I'm stacking the ones that are done from smallest to largest, so whoops. Up next... I have a book that inspired me to watch literally an entire TV show, um, and that is The Secret History of Twin Peaks. So I'm going to insert a picture that for me just represents the complete weirdness of Twin Peaks, the weirdness and wonderfulness 
that was Twin Peaks. Um, now and yeah, a llama face to face with an FBI agent. Pretty <laughs> weird. Um, although Twin Peaks had so much dark humor in it, I absolutely loved it. Um, so yeah, I bought the book because it was on sale at Books a Million for like seven dollars. And let's see, yeah, its original price was thirty, and I liked how it looked. And if you look inside of it, it has footnotes on the side from like different FBI agents that worked on the Twin Peaks case, which, if you don't know, was the murder of a young girl. The they kind of started the trope of oh, the the town favorite girl who, you know, everybody loved, who was prom queen and was going to go somewhere and get out of that tiny town. Twin Peaks kind of started that trope. Um, but it has, like, scans of documents and pictures and all this cool stuff that you'll recognize from the show if you've watched it. Um, if you have a dark sense of humor, go watch Twin Peaks. If you don't, and, you're, and your sense of humor is not obscure, if you have just a very straightforward sense of humor, you won't like it. But I loved it. <laughs> Next to the last book that I have is Hamilton! The Revolution! So, okay. I'm wait. I love Hamilton. No, I, no, you can never love Hamilton way too much. I will not apologize for that. Um, this was gifted to me for my birthday at the same time as the Grimm's Fairy Tales book, and I love it. It, it not only does it have decorated edges, which is like the uneven edges that you feel like they they feel kind of torn, and like instead they were cut. Love decorated edges. Um, but it also has sketches. Um, it has a bunch of stuff in it. On it has all the lyrics from every song, um, including the excerpted songs. I believe that were not in the musical, um, like "Congratulations," or it at least mentions them. It has full color pages of moments from the musical. Um, it it has just chapters on the songs and each process, everything that Lin-Manuel Miranda went through to create Hamilton, who he worked with, where he got his inspirations. And I mean, Hamilton is definitely a musical that will be remembered forever as something that changed musical theater. It, I mean, it, it just did. It completely changed it. And I think that's so cool. And people will always remember Hamilton. Um, but this book gives you some more insight into the characters, into the thought process, into the designs of the clothing, um, into the design of the set, pretty much everything that happened in Hamilton. This will tell you how it got there. So I think that is really cool. My final book is actually the book that I was going to use to draw from for my video that hopefully I'll get up next week. And that is... Magical Beasts, the compendium of magical beasts. Um, it says, an anatomical study of cryptozoology's most elusive beings. And a uh, glare that has a phoenix on it. It looks really cool. Inside, um, it has like these pages that look like they're really, really old. It has pictures of each of the creatures at the beginning of their chapter diagrams and everything so it's a really really cool book um I did buy it because number one I have wanted a compendium of mythical creatures because I love the lore so much for a while it disappointed me a little um that it wasn't like from A to Z it's just kind of some of the most popular ones although I wouldn't consider a jackalope a popular mythical being Anyways, um, so it's a really cool book, and that is the end of today's video, except let me tell you what hopefully I'm going to be starting soon if my body cooperates with me. 
Um, so from this book, what I want to do is I actually want to cover every mainstream mythical creature that this book contains and make a video on it. Dive into the lore and the character of the creature and the species and the differences between how they're represented in mainstream media across the ages and dive into all of that. First up, I'm going to do vampires. Rawr. <laughs> um, and so I'm going to just dive into the history of vampires, their origins, basically everything that I know about them <laughs> and through all of my ridiculous research that was fueled by obsessions with books and characters. Not Twilight, I'm sorry. Don't. We'll talk, we'll talk about Twilight eventually. It's not now. <laughs> so I hope you had fun, you know, just kind of getting a look at some of my favorite books that I think are the coolest or the most interesting. And tune in for next week, because hopefully it'll be vampires. <laughs> I hope you've gotten your spoofful of geekiness for the day. And as a madman in a box once said, run fast, laugh hard, and be kind. Bye, guys. So today, if you notice some empty shelves behind me, it's because I've pulled some of my favorite interesting or cool books off of my bookshelf and I would like to share them with you because I think they're really neat and my cat is scratching the floor and I feel like I have mascara in my eye oh everything hates me today okay